Okay, can somebody confirm you can hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Great. Before we begin, are there any questions? I had a question. Sorry, I wasn't here for the lecture part due to work. Um, did you mention uh, what quiz two was going to be over? Yeah, it's in the syllabus. Let me oh, show okay. you in just a minute here. Okay. All right, let's uh, let me share my screen here. Optimize. There you go. Should be seeing my screen now. Today is October 15th, and we're going to be discussing Lab 5, Streaking for Isolation and Culture Media. The quiz will be Wednesday, and it will be over Labs 3 and 4, Chapter 3, and the end of Chapter 2. Remember, we just finished Chapter 3 today. Usually, I give you a little more time, but... Uh, I don't know. This is the way it worked out this term. Uh, any questions about anything? All right. So let's discuss chapter five. Uh, let me state, you should also read your unknown project instructions file on Canvas for next week. I will remind you on Thursday. Uh, I will be discussing the unknown project next week. All right, lab five, cultivation of bacteria, culture media, inoculation, and isolation. There is some reading in the textbook, but not very much. A few pages on culture media, and then uh, uh, one page on obtaining pure cultures. There are some vir vir virtual clip video clips in today's lab. Now, there is no virtual lab. Let me get a little book here. There we go. Uh, the learning objectives are upon successful completion of this lab, you should be able to one, understand the importance of proper specimen collection and transport to the laboratory. Two, explain the five principal steps used by microbiologists to process specimens. Three, differentiate between various types of culture media. Uh, four, explain the purpose of streak plate culture technique, aka uh, streaking for colony isolation. Uh, five, define the following terms, selective media, differential media, and reducing media. Any question about any of that? All right. The ability to isolate pathogens from a clinical specimen submitted for culture is only as good as the collection technique and the timely transport of the specimen to the lab. Some microbes are sensitive to desiccation, they'll dry out, and some are sensitive to exposure to oxygen, all anaerobes, and require special transport medium to keep the specimen alive. Today, we're gonna to talk about once a specimen is received in the lab for microbial culture, microbiologists employ the five principal I steps to process it. First, there's inoculation. Second, isolation. Three, incubation. Four, inspection. And five, identification. In one, inoculation, that's placing the specimen on an artificial culture medium to initiate the growth. Two, isolation is to spatially separate out microbial growth into distinct colonies and then grow them up as a peer culture and then uh, do your testing on the peer culture. Uh, three, incubation is placing the culture medium in an environment under conditions to facilitate its growth. We normally incubate our microbial growth in an incubator. 
for inspection that's examining the culture for the presence of microbial growth and then getting some basic information about the culture. Five, identification, that's performing specific tests to identify any pathogenic microbes that are isolated. The five steps will be described in detail after first discussing different types of culture media. You're already familiar with general purpose media, such as NA or nutrient auger, or NA, nutrient auger with yeast extract, and uh, TSA or triptych soy auger. These media are rich with nutrients that allow the growth of many types of organisms to grow, but not all organisms will grow in a general purpose media. Today, we're gonna to talk about media. And if you were to come into the microbiology lab at Clark College, we have a book that's a little bigger than this. Hopefully you can see this. I'll have to <laughs> stop the share and then I can see if you can see this because I can't see it. All right, yeah, I can easily see it. So it's actually a little bigger than this. Well, I lost it now. I lost myself too. I don't know why. Uh, it's a little bigger than this. I'm blocking the face. And so that's why it's blocking me out of the picture. And it's a little, well, no, it's about that wide and about that thick. So it tells you how big the book is. And like I said, it's actually a little bit bigger than uh, this. And uh, each page of this book has a culture media. And that tells you how many different culture media we have in microbiology, because that's a large number of pages. It's over 300. And each page discusses one media. Any questions about any of that? So in microbiology, we have a very large number of media that you can grow the bacteria in. Obviously in the lab, we don't have that many for you to use, but that's how many it's possible to use. There's different types of media. To promote the growth of fastidious microbes, those that have very specific nutritional requirements, and if you don't supply those nutritional requirements, they will not grow. We call these enriched general purpose media. For example, 5% sheep's blood may be incorporated into the growth media to help the organism grow. And this would be blood auger plates containing 5% sheep's blood to allow the organisms to grow. For example, Streptococcus pyogenes will not grow on a general purpose media plate. However, if you add 5% sheep's blood to it, the sheep's blood will supply the nutrients that Streptococcus pyogenes requires to grow, and then you could get it to grow in the lab. Streptococcus pyogenes is the species that causes strep throat, by the way, and it causes many other diseases that are actually kind of rare today because generally when somebody gets strep throat, we get antibiotic treatment, and then that gets rid of the Streptococcus pyogenes. But if it were to continue in the, in the patient, you could get different diseases. Let's see if I can try to remember, like scarlet fever. I'm sorry, you forgot to share your screen. Oh, again. thank you. Fortunately, thank you. Far. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Whenever that happens, just let me know. Sure. All right, so there is a blood auger as well as chocolate auger, which is the same as blood auger. It's just the blood is added when the auger comes straight out of the micro, not the microwave, the uh, autoclave, and the 
agar is hot, very hot, and it lyses the red blood cells, causing the uh, agar to turn brown in color, and it looks sort of like chocolate, why it's called chocolate color, but it has no chocolate in it. It's actually blood that's been lysed. And in blood agar, you add the blood after the agar has cooled, but not cool enough that the agar solidifies. And then you mix the blood in the agar and then pour the plates and let it cool. And that's blood agar. Any questions about enriched general purpose media? There is also selective media, and this contains a chemical that inhibits or halts the growth of some organism, but allows other organisms to grow. Keep in mind that when you grow things on a selective media, the selective media isn't necessarily perfectly selective, meaning if given enough time, the culture that is being selected against may grow on the selective media. So it's selected against, but it doesn't mean that it's 100% selective. And so the culture may grow. And then even organisms that are supposed to grow on the selective media may form smaller colonies or grow slower than they would on a general purpose media. There are many kinds of selective media. Oh, where's my mouse? There it is. Uh, one selective media is a 7% sodium chloride, and it only allows bacteria to grow if the bacteria can um, tolerate 7% sodium chloride. Most bacteria species will not grow above 2% sodium chloride, and 7% is much higher than that, and so only bacteria that can tolerate salt will grow on 7% sodium chloride. So that is a selective media. Any question about any of that? There's also differential media, and this contains a chemical that produces visible differences among different groups of organisms when they are grown on that medium. The differences are unrelated to how well the organism will grow on the media. Differential culture allows dissimilar to bacteria to be visually distinguished from each other. They may appear differently or they may take on a different color. Lastly, there is reducing media, and this is to promote the growth of anaerobic bacteria. Because Anaerobic bacteria generally require low or no oxygen conditions in order to grow. And so we have a reducing media, which pulls the oxygen out of the media. And then in the bottom of the tube, for example, the uh, oxygen would be zero, and then the anaerobes could grow. It's important to note that the culture media can be classified into more than one category. For example, McConkie's auger is both selective and differential. Blood auger is both uh, a general purpose media and a differential media. Any question about any of that? So let's talk a little bit about McConkie's auger. It is selective. So if the organism can grow on McConkie's auger, it is likely to be gram negative because it selects against gram positive organisms. And most gram positive organisms do not grow on McConkie's auger. It is selective because the uh, Gram positives do not grow, the gram negatives do. It is also differential because it has the sugar lactose in it and a pH indicator. And if the organism can ferment the sugar lactose, it'll become acidic 
and then we'll change the color to pink. And you can see not only is the colonies pinkish, but the, uh, the auger around the colonies is also pinkish. And that's because the organism can ferment the sugar lactose. If the organism grows on the plate, but does not turn pinkish, that means it's gram negative, but it cannot ferment the sugar lactose. And that's why it's differential, allowing you to differentiate a lactose fermenting bacteria from a non lactose fermenting bacteria. Any question about any of that? And then if there's growth on the plate, which in this case is both, uh, that means it's a gram negative organism because gram positive tend not to grow on McConkie's auger. Blood auger is a general purpose media that is enriched, meaning an enriched general purpose media, because it supplies nutrients from the blood that can allow a fastidious organism to grow, such as Streptococcus pyogenes. It is also a differential media because when you grow cells on blood auger, you can differentiate between three different types of hemolysis. Hemolysis is the lysing of the red blood cells. Let me blow this up. Here is gamma hemolysis, also called no hemolysis, where the red blood cells are red all the way up to where the... Um, streaking of the bacteria is, which is basically white. Gamma hemolysis. This, on the other hand, is alpha hemolysis, which is the partial lysing of the blood cells, and that causes the dark, dark ring around the streak of bacteria, which is kind of off-white, and then we have this dark ring around the off-white cells, and then further out, we have the red of the red blood cells. Uh, you can look inside the alpha. This region is all dark, and that's because inside the alpha, uh, it is uh, completely alpha he hemolytic activity, meaning partial hemolysis. Any question about any of that? And the third type of he hemolysis is beta hemolysis, shown here in the white beta is our streak of bacteria. And this bacteria can completely lyse the red blood cells while we have a clear region around the beta and inside the beta where all of the red blood cells have been lysed. You can actually hold this uh, plate up to something and see through the clear region, like you can put it up to the light, you can see the light bulb um, in the clear region. Any question about any of that? You'll notice that around the complete hemolysis, we have a ring of alpha hemolysis. And I'll just mention that's normally seen. Any question about any of that? All right, so uh, blood auger is both enriched, like you can grow Streptococcus pyogenes on the blood auger, you cannot on like TSA. And then it is differential, allowing you to differentiate between different hemolytic patterns. All right, this table is showing you uh, a summary of the different types of media that we talked about, the general purpose media, including TSA, uh, NA, nutrient auger, TSA, tryptic soy auger, uh, NA, nutrient auger with yeast extract, promoting the growth of many organisms, but not if they're fastidious. So a fastidious organ will not grow in a general purpose media. And then we have uh, an a differential and enriched medium, which would be blood auger, 
promoting the growth of some fastidious organisms, and then allowing you to differentiate on the basis of hemolytic activity that the species promotes. And then there's CAP, which is only a general purpose media, excuse me, an enriched general purpose media. It does have blood, so like Streptococcus pyogenes can grow on uh, chocolate auger. And by the way, BAP is an acronym for blood auger plate, CAP an acronym for uh, chocolate auger plate. Uh, Haemophilus species is a species that will grow on chocolate auger, but will not grow on uh, blood auger plate. And that's because Haemophilus needs the red blood cell to be lysed in order to get the nutrients from the blood. And Haemophilus cannot lyse the red blood cell. So Haemophilus, uh, what's the species I'm trying to think of? Ah, it'll come to me. Haemophilus will not grow on a blood auger plate, but it will grow on cap. Haemophilus influenzae, I think, is the one I'm trying to think of. And then there's selective and differential media. Both McConkies, also called MAC, eosine methylene blue, or EMB, and hectone auger, or HE auger, are both selective and differential. They are all selective in that they select for the growth of gram negatives and select against gram positives. They are also all differential on their basis of fermenting the sugar lactose. There'll be a different color if they can ferment the sugar lactose. A McConkie, as I've already explained to you, it'll be pinkish color if it can grow on the plate and it ferments the sugar lactose. Uh, HE plate or a hectone alger, if it can ferment the sugar lactose, it will be salmon colored. It's a yellow orange color. And if it will cannot ferment the sugar lactose, it'll be uh, the normal bacteria color, such as off-white or whatever color the bacteria normally is. Any question about any of that? All right. Then there is a media which is selective. There's only one that we're going to talk about that's selective, and that's phenyl ethyl alcohol or PEA. This is selective against gram negatives. So gram positives can grow on PEA. And then there is MSA, which is selective and differential. It is selective uh, because it has salt in it. So only salt tolerant species can grow on mannitol salt auger. It is differential based upon the uh, ability to ferment the sugar mannitol. And so if you ever ask the question, what's in mannitol salt auger? It's the sugar mannitol, and it's actually sodium chloride or salt. Any question about any of that? Uh, you can grow Staphylococcus aureus on mannitol salt auger, and uh, it can grow on mannitol salt auger. Any Staphylococcus species can, because it can tolerate salt. And then it will turn yellow because it can ferment the sugar mannitol. Other members of the Staphylococcus family cannot ferment the sugar mannitol, like uh, Staphylococcus epidermidis, and so it will not turn yellow. And that's why it's differential. Any question about any of that? All right, let's return to the five principal I steps, inoculation, isolation, incubation, inspection, and identification. Inoculation is just putting your culture or your cells on the media and then... Uh, 
putting them in the incubator to grow. And that would be actually step three, which we'll get to, incubation. Uh, obviously, when you first have a culture, like a culture you got from a patient, you'll get many different species growing initially. You'll have to grow it out, select an individual colony, streak it out to get a second isolated colony, and then take from that second isolated colony to grow it up to get a pure culture. And that is isolation. Louis Pasteur initiated the work of getting a pure culture. You need to work with a pure culture because if you have a mixed culture and your tube gets a certain result, let's say it turns yellow, you don't know which species in the mixed culture was responsible for changing the tube yellow. Was it your species of interest or was it another species? Or was it all of the species? You just don't know. And if you grow it as a pure culture and then put that pure culture in the tube, if the pure culture turns yellow, you know that that pure culture caused the result of that test. And so you need to isolate your species and get a pure culture. Robert Koch well, actually, let me briefly talk about Louis Pasteur, developed a very difficult way of obtaining a pure culture. And what he did was he made different dilutions of a liquid culture. And then each dilution, he uh, plated it in 10 different tubes. And if one dilution had one tube that had growth in it and nine tubes that had no growth in it, uh, Louis Pasteur concluded that the with the growth in it is probably a pure culture because very few cells were used to uh, get the growth to grow in the tube. So if the dilution had more than one tube with growth, Louis Pasteur wouldn't use it. He would use another dilution, which only one tube out of the nine had growth in it. And he correctly concluded that most likely that tube was a pure culture. Robert Koch developed a much easier method for getting a pure culture. And that is you just streak the bacteria on a solid auger plate getting isolated colonies, taking an isolated colony, streaking it out a second time, you get another isolated colony. The cells that have gone through two colony isolation events are likely to be a pure culture. Over 95% of them will be a pure culture. Uh, what you do to get a uh, pure culture is first you streak out the bacteria on a plate. And you really should be streaking out about 20 times on each sector. And then you sterilize the loop and you uh, put it down into sector two and then go back into sector one to get the cells which are somewhat diluted, meaning right here, you shouldn't be going back into this region because this is where the culture will be very dense. You should be where the cells are a little bit diluted. So what you should be doing is only coming like right here, right here and right there and right there. You shouldn't be going there. You should be only going to here and here and then there. And you should go about only three times into the first culture to pick up some cells on your inoculating loop. And then you streak it out to get the cells in sector two. And then you sterilize your loop and uh, streak it out for 
uh, sector three or quadrant three. And then once you got that done, you streak it out again for quadrant four. And here, this one is actually done correctly. You uh, sterilize your loop, and then you come into sector four, where the cells are dilute, right here on sector three, to pick up some cells on your loop. And you go in, well, this is a, you only should go in about three times. So this would be one time, that would be two, and then that would be three. So that's about it. This actually goes four, five, six times, which is a little bit more than you want. But at least it's getting it where the cells are dilute. And then you streak out quadrant four. And hopefully someplace along in your streaking, you're putting down isolated cells, which will grow into an isolated colony. This is showing you in quadrant four, but it doesn't matter which quadrant the isolated colonies are, are growing in. If it's sector three, that'd be fine. Sector two, it's fine. Even sector one, if you have a very dilute uh, bacteria culture to begin with, you could get your isolated colonies in sector one. So it doesn't matter where it will be. The point is you'd now have an isolated colony. You, you take the cells from one isolated colony and you streak it out on a second plate to get more isolated colonies. After the cells have gone through two colony formation events, you then can pick the cells from that colony on the second plate and then those cells will likely be a pure culture. Greater than 95% of them will be a pure culture. Now notice I've stated that greater than 95% will be a pure culture. That means that not 100% of them will be a pure culture. So there's always the risk that you might get a mixed culture, even though you've streaked out for colony isolation two times. But it's very rare, less than 5% of the cases. Okay, any question about any of that? Now, if you were to only streak it out one time from a mixed culture and then took your uh, culture from one colony here, only about 70% of the colonies will be pure. 30% of the col cultures or colonies will be mixed. Even though it looks pure, 30% will be mixed. And 30% is not good enough in microbiology. Any question about any of that? So if you want a pure culture, you streak it out for colony isolation two times. And then get your uh, culture to grow, get your pure cul culture, and then incubate your pure culture in uh, an incubator to get it to grow. Incubation, remember, is just putting the cells in the appropriate environment to cultivate the microbes. You can have incubators which are complex and can control the amount of oxygen, the amount of carbon dioxide available, can control the temperature, control the humidity, and the time. The time is you allow the cells to grow for so long in the incubator. Here is a complex incubator that can control oxygen and CO2 in the microbiology lab at Clark College, we don't have any complex incubators. Our incubators can only control the temperature, the time you decide how long to grow the bacteria in the incubator, and the humidity. You see this dish there? You put water in that dish that puts uh, water into the air, making it humid. That's actually important because if you humidify the air, the culture can remain alive for a little over a week in the incubator. The plate will be prevented from drying out because you got humid air. So the culture can remain in the incubator for a little over a week. 
if you do not have humidified air or water in the incubator to make the air humidified, the plate will dry out after, I don't know, three to five days. You cannot grow them for a week generally in the incubator without humidified air. Any question about any of that? You then take your plate out after you've grown it in the incubator and look at obvious visible colony morphological differences between different species of bacteria. Microbiologists can describe the appearance of colonies by a variety of descriptors, such as the size, the shape, the margin, and the elevation. I'll refer to Lab 1 for a review of the appropriate terms, and we'll talk a little bit more about the different colony characteristics in one of the labs. I'm not sure it's going to be today. Uh, and then you do identification of the species you purified, trying to identify what species it is. To get the identification, you must run specific tests to further study the species. Any question about any of that? Uh, nowadays, you may not run the uh, microbiological tests that we're going to talk about. You may just take the bacteria out and sequence the DNA to figure out what species it is. Most clinical specimens are still running the uh, microbial tests that we'll talk about in this class, actually, not necessarily today. All right, know the terms of this lab. You don't need to look at the, uh, the references. In the laboratory exercises, you should know that Everything we do is going to be done online. So we're not actually going to be doing anything. Uh, yourself with hands-on activity. There's a little video to watch on inoculation of an auger plate using the streak plate culture technique, meaning streaking for colony isolation. You only need to watch this to 4 minutes and 15 seconds. You should note that in this video, they're only streaking out the culture to three different sectors. So they're not doing it to the fourth quadrant. And that's fine. And then there's a little video to watch on beta hemolysis, alpha hemolysis, and gamma hemolysis. They're short little videos. And then there's a video to watch on McConkie's auger. You only need to watch this video for up until three minutes and 50 seconds into the video, talking about McConkie's auger. And then a little short video discussing mannitol salt auger. Any question about any of that? All right, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the worksheet. We'll now talk about the laboratory exercises for this lab. For lab five, your first question is to describe a natural circumstance where Staphylococcus species might benefit from salt tolerance, meaning where can Staphylococcus grow that has a high concentration of salt? And a natural circumstance means you cannot say a mannitol salt auger in the lab because that's not a natural circumstance where Staphylococcus grows. Any question about any of that? Excuse me here, I'm about to sneeze. Oh, ah. All right, two, how might hemolysis benefit a hemolytic organism? So we have a bacteria species that can lyse the red blood cells. How may that benefit the bacterial species? Answer that here. Three, 
Imagine you have a culture containing a single bacterial species. This culture may be one of several possible species. Describe a scenario where you use mannitol salt auger, blood auger, and EMB plates to identify the unknown bacterial species. That is, you must name two properties from each of these media to help you identify the species. Any question about any of that? All right, uh, four, what is the main goal for streaking for colony isolation? Five, what happens to the growth on the plate if you do everything correctly, but you forget to sterilize the loop in between sectors when streaking for isolation? You need to be specific discussing the growth you see on each sector. Now note, everything is done correctly, so you are sterilizing the loop before you begin sector one, but you do not sterilize the loop in between sectors one and two, two and three, and possibly three and four. What will happen? Write that down in five. Six, what happens to the growth on the plate if you do everything correctly, but you transfer from stock culture to inoculate each of the sectors. Once again, you must be specific discussing the growth you see on each sector. Seven, suppose you successfully streak a plate and obtain isolated colonies of two different bacterial species, meaning you've streaked out a mixed culture and you see two different bacterial species on your plate. How can you use this plate to create a new pure culture of only one of the bacteria? Be specific in your answer. Eight, in the table below are a variety of auger plate media available to microbiologists to cultivate bacteria. To note whether each medium is non-selective, a general growth media, whether it's a selective media and or a differential media be, by placing an X in the appropriate column or columns. Obviously, if the media is selective and differential, you put it in this column and that column. Okay, so you may put it in more than one column. So nutrient auger, state whether it's non-selective, selective to differential, a TSA, blood auger, cap, McConkie's auger, EMB, hectone enteric auger, HE, phenyl ethyl alcohol, or PEA, or mannitol salt auger, MSA. Any questions about number eight? Remember, you can take a look in the lab module, and I've got a table discussing the different media. And then uh, in question nine, it asks you which auger plate or plates were inoculated using streak plate technique, meaning streaking for colony isolation. Plate A, plate B, plate C. Any question about any of that? All right, remember to work on the worksheet Submit only the worksheet. If you submit the lab module, you'll first get a warning, and then I will apply a penalty. If you've already gotten the warning, you'll get the penalty if you submit the lab module. So only answer the questions in the worksheet. I think the questions are in the worksheet. Uh, but they may have been changed. All right. Any question about that? If not, I'll be in here until, um, I guess, 8 o'clock or until the last student logs out to help you with the lab and answer any questions. Any questions? All right. Work on the lab. Since we're doing... Since we're doing lab five um, today, 
um, for Thursday, are we having lab in class or are we having the lab syllabus? In Let me look at the syllabus. I know okay. we're not doing a lab on Thursday. I mean, uh, uh, lab six, we're not doing on Thursday. For Thursday, I will be showing up for the first 15 minutes to answer any questions. After that time, I will then log out. There is no lab on Thursday. You can work on your unknown, excuse me, in your uh, infectious disease project. Okay. Will there be lecture on Thursday? Yes, it's right there. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Excuse me. It's right there. Hopefully I was sharing my screen, was I? I was not. Oh, well. No, it's okay. <laughs> you can take a look okay. at the syllabus. It's on the syllabus. All right. Thank you. All right.